what, what I would hope is that we don't let a vote on a term sheet, and hopefully to negotiate and execute, I hope we don't let a vote on that die because it's not perfect. And that's just something that we strive for, but I hope we don't let it go because it's just not perfect. Thank you. Well, maybe we can have free clinics. And then the last question that I have for the Lone Star folks, what is... I just wanted to find out, what is the registration for uh, Lone Star, for the, for the youth who come and play at uh, Lone Star Soccer? What is the registration? So all of our players number in excess of 7,000. Roughly 50% of those are recreational. And then uh, the DA is probably, oh, I was asking, I wasn't asking how many members, I was asking what the registration cost is. Oh, I'm sorry. Not the registration numbers. Yes, thank you. So our registration costs vary by, for example, whether it's recreational or whether it's the DA. So for, as a DA player, it may cost $2,600. Uh, we have some recreational programs that I believe are $75. Okay. We have everything in between. Very good. Thank you. You bet. And I would also like to get some better information about how the women will be able to participate. Um, not here, but we may be able to get some information later, more privately. Yes, uh, Mr. Bacchus, before you sit down, here I am. Here, here I am right here. Uh, Richard, come back here. I'm sorry, I, I knew there was a Yes, ma'am. Um, haven't seen you for a couple of years now. Uh, you've got your facility opened up out in the ETJ, and are you going to be working with Pflugerville ISD or Maynard? So, we're, so our facility is is not up and running it's yet. It's not up and running. Okay. We're, we're we're bogged down in this thing called the City of Austin permitting process. But you're not in the City of Austin. Uh, but we're in the ETJ, so we're doing the one stop. Oh, okay. So we have to do both. We're, it's it's a, it's site plan approval and and the plat as well. So where are you uh, where are you all located now? We're st we're at the very same site. Okay. Um, we had to withdraw and resubmit literally in the last ten days. Okay. But so yes, we will work with Maynard and we will work with the city of Fleurville. Yes. Okay. Thanks. on the dais. Mr. Sato, just so the people understand, the youth soccer clinics, we have two and a half million dollars for that. Um, do the men and women play in that equally? Say that again? The youth soccer clinics, mm -hmm. is that girls and boys yes. equally? Yes. And then there are 30 youth soccer camps per year, separate from the clinics. Is that girls and boys? Yes. And then there are youth scholarships for soccer clubs, um, almost $2 million of those. Is that both girls and boys? Yes. What about the donations of equipment and gear? It's over a million dollars. Is that, is that for girls and boys as well? Yes. Okay. You should be talking about that, not the development leagues. I wanted to raise one more thing that it's not playing on the field, but it's an interesting thing. At every game, kids come out on the field and escort the, the players, and there are uh, opportunities in the term sheet for um, kids to come out on the field during the games and all. So it's, there, are, there are lots of opportunities. It's the field construction monies. That was another million dollars. Is that both girls and boys fields? Yes, it is. We're on the dais. Paper them. Just on that on that point. So one of the one of the amendments that I think we should make to that sheet that lists community benefits um, is to identify that all of those items, all of the youth soccer clinics, five, six, seven, eight and eight, all should, all should articulate that they're open to girls and boys, which is consistent with the intent here. I 
I'm really struggling though with the academy piece. We'll leave we'll leave it for now. But I do think it would be I, I do think it would be helpful to have some information. I would really encourage the parties involved to provide us with some information about how many how many women will benefit, young women will benefit. Um, could we talk for a minute about, I guess we just got, who is this from, this amendment? Yeah, sorry, I should have put pool up at the top there. Okay, thank you. Something? Were you speaking? I was just getting an email about Lone Did, Star Soccer. Didn't, didn't, so didn't want to interrupt you. There's just too much information coming in all at once. No, I'm done. I, okay. I was interested in knowing who this is. I don't right. know what further process discussion, we're going to use. Further discussion on the dais. Okay. Councilor um, Alder. I just wanted to, for my colleagues who don't have children who play soccer, to note that um, Lone Star is for boys and girls. It's not just a girl's program, um, if that might have been confusing in the conversation. Um, I, I do want to clarify um, in regards to uh, Mr. Suttle's comments that something that Mr. Flanagan mentioned, we as the municipal government carry the value of gender equality here. Um, so without understanding what we would be giving our land for and how it lives up to our municipal values, we can't know if it meets our values or the trade-offs that we face tonight. And so these questions are legitimate questions. And I think that we, um, we've probably dealt with this question for now, but um, I don't want us to leave thinking that it's okay to poo-poo questions that are raised about whether girls and women have the same rights in the playing field, the same access um, to being at sports. I have a daughter who's an athlete, and I know the benefits of sports and the benefits of participation, of being part of a team, and um, we have a responsibility to make sure that both boys and girls have an opportunity to enjoy that. Mr. Mayor, could I answer the question about the number of players in the GDA? So roughly in the GDA, we have roughly 300 girls and our WPSL it's a roster of roughly 30 girls so there are 330 girls that are, will be a direct beneficiary of the directions and and generosity of PSV sir yes I'm sorry I, I'm sure you explained these acronyms to us earlier it's just a little hard to follow at this time of night. Would you mind telling us those numbers again and explaining what level you're talking about? Sure. It, it's, I've been doing this 25 years and it's confusing to me. So there's the Development Academy and the Development Academy is made up of the Boys Development Academy and the Girls Development Academy. We call the Girls Development Academy the GDA. And, and our girls, there are roughly 300 from the youngest to the oldest. That's probably, you know, 12 to 19 year, years old. And then we have the, what we call the WPSL, which is the Women's Premier Soccer League. And that is kind of, the, that's, Jackie actually plays on that team. And it is past pros, aspiring pros, and college players. And that's a roster of 30. I will tell you that a specific of the agreement PSV has agreed to underwrite the WPSL, okay? They have agreed to, to underwrite our Girls Development Academy. So those 330 girls will directly benefit from PSV. But it's, it's more than that because the relationship is coaching education, it's coaching development, it's technical advice, uh, it's, it's a lot of collaboration 
and that will bleed through our entire our entire organization all the way down through the recreational soccer ranks. So we believe it'll, it'll benefit a lot more kids than that. Okay, so as I understand, thank you for providing that additional information. Sure. I have a few more questions for you. Sure. So your no problem. So what your statements just, the statements you just made suggest if I'm, if I'm hearing you correctly, this arrangement is going to underwrite the elite league of 30 players as well as the academy? Yes, ma'am. When you, I mean, I'm going to ask you a question that may cross the line into what you can't sure. reveal, but when you say underwrite, are you talking about funding in total, or are we, are we talking about funding, and are we talking about funding in total, or does that get into the agreement that you have? So I would say that as it refers to the WPSL, it's funding in total. Um, when it refers to the Development Academy, um, they are going to augment the program that we currently have in place. And again, there's so many pieces to the puzzle. It will be financial. It will be scholarships. It will be travel dollars. It will be equipment. It will be coaching education. Um, Here's a, a huge benefit to us that we spoke about just two days ago. Um, the U.S. Development Academy puts rigorous requirements on this. They require us to record the games. So they, we, we've, it includes um, equipment and things that allow us to do that more effectively. Um, so those are some of the details that, uh, that we discussed just two days ago. Thank you. And is this for an ongoing period of time or? Decades is, is the word used in the agreement. Okay. Thank you. Can, so someone want to move the, the, uh, the, the term sheet so we have a base motion up that we can amend? Mayor Partem, do you want to do that? Do you want to move the base term sheet? So, so let me say, like I've said before, the term sheet just got released. Right. Last night, I have not read through the whole thing, so there's no way that I'm going to be able to vote on it tonight. Mr. Bacchus, you can sit down. Okay. okay. We're back up to the dais. Everybody's thinking and working. I would move the base term sheet so that we have a motion in front of us. Is there a second to the base term sheet? Mr. Flanagan seconds it. It's in front of us now. Thank you. We have a second already. Yes, Councilman Poole. I have a number of amendments um, that I can pass out individually, and I'll try to put my name on the top of all of them. I apologize. The first one I sent out, it's 1.3. We require community benefits commitments to continue through the renewal terms, and it would amend the term sheet on page 18 as follows. I'll just go ahead and read it because it's pretty uh, short unless we can put it up on the overhead. We got an extra one to put up on the overhead. And basically, uh, what this does is uh, Exhibit 5 for the community benefits has an initial term of the lease, and then benefits um, would extend according to the current term sheet if mutually agreed. And so my sentence at the end adds in, in the absence of that mutual agreement, the club shall provide the community benefits in Exhibit 5 over the extension terms as well. In other words, it provides a default to continue the existing terms into uh, the existing terms from the first uh, term of the lease through the renewal terms. Do you have a series of these, Catherine Paul? I do. Do you want to hand them out so that we can see collectively what they are? Well, I could do that, except they're in different parts of the term sheet, and there are a number of them, and I didn't want to clutter up everybody's. Uh, well, my thinking but I'd be is, happy to. I have to write my name on all of them. Well, if you uh, hand Mr. them out, we could, we, could all write, we could all write your name on top of it if we do it together. Uh, Mr. Mayor, 
Yeah. Uh, it would be helpful to me to understand who all has amendments, so, so maybe folks could let us know. Yeah, I think if we could do that and see the universe of them, I think that would be helpful. Councilor Garza. So we call this pool number one. So we'll call this one pool number one, which is 1.3. Pool number one. I can probably find you a pen in my bag if you need one. And when you're ready to hand out those other ones, if you could do that, Leslie. Councilor Garza. Um, I have one. It's on its way down. It's related to transit. Okay. I do, but I don't know how we want to. Well. You want to hand them out? Please. Okay. Just, Just so we can see the, see, see the universe and see what we're dealing with. Well, Matt, can I suggest that we not all hand them out at the same time? Yes, that's yes. Just all the pools out and then get somebody else's yeah. out because then that's that gets us confused. All right. Councilor Poole, would you hand out yours, please? Okay. I, Mr. Mayor, I always just wanted, to, even if we don't hand them out, I wanted to get an idea. We'll get them here in just a second. Okay. And I don't think you have to write it down on each one. Just hand them out and then we'll all write down what you want us to write down on the top Mayor, of it. Um, I also have some questions, Mayor, for um, PSV and for staff about elements of the term sheet that are separate from amendments. When is it appropriate to in just ask a, those questions? In just a moment. Let's, let's get the amendments out and then we'll go do that. Okay. Thank you. All right. So what's being handed out right now is 7.1, specifying authority over public parkland. We're going to enable that one, pool number two. <coughs> pool number two is the one that has 7.1 at the top. Do you have other ones other than those two? Oh, God, yes. Four more. Okay. Let's hand them out. Should be a total of six. Can I ask a question? If you just hand them all of them to, to Delia, she'll pass them down and we'll get them out that much faster for you. Handle that when it when it's in front of everybody. And Mayor, I also um, my staff is super hardworking, like all our staffs are, and I have some additional backup information. I'll pass this out. This is a comparison, a cost-benefit analysis, because I think that um, the numbers matter. And so we have known costs, unknown costs, community benefits, using PSV estimates, and deficit cost of intangible benefits. And this is a better representation, I think, than the, um, the chart that we got. Um, in a, well, it's, it'll accompany the one that we got at the request of Councilmember Kitchen. Okay. So hold on, we pass it out. So, so colleagues, there's a document that just got handed out by Councilmember Poole. Four more we're going to number. The first one is 7.3. It says, well, actually, 1.3 is number one. One 7.1, which begins amend the term sheet by adding a new section as follows: open space and parkland. That's pool number two. That's number two. Right. That's and then pool number three is also called maintaining city control over, no, no. It's specifying authority over public parkland. Okay, and, that's term and sheet it begins, amend the term sheet on page five as follows. And that's number three. Okay, that's pool number three. Okay. <coughs> and then which one's pool number four? That's the maintaining city control over public infrastructure. Okay, maintain city control over public infrastructure is pool number four. Okay. Number five is 8.2, require PSV to fund a train station. Okay, pool number five is fund a train station. And pool number six is 1.2, require PSV to make annual payments to other local governments. Okay, that's pool number six. 
Okay. And then the cost-benefit analysis does have my name on it. Good. And then, Councilmember Garza, do you have something that you're handing out? I don't have it. Don't have it yet? Okay. And I have one more supporting document, soccer stadium subsidies versus top three largest 380 incentive agreements in the city of Austin. And that just shows you what we've done with 380 agreements and what we're being asked to do here. And this also has my name on it. Okay. Okay. Does anybody else have amendments they want there that they have that they can hand out? Mayor, mine are also on the way down, and you know, usually, usually I think we're all sort of in a position of distributing them on the dais and in the morning and whatnot. Um, so I apologize that that mine are still in progress, but so they're not down are, here yet. No, they're not. Okay. Uh, but I'll give you a sense of what they are. There are amendments that speak to green building that talk about public access in the stadium. And I think I had some um, external, but um, they may be covered with what Council Member Poole just did. They emphasize um, a bit, they put more emphasis on one of the, the points in our original resolution about using local vendors, goods, and labor. And then there are edits to the community benefits. I will say um, some of these are, are amendments that um, came that I believe pre-court is, I don't know how to express this, but I raised some concerns and they provided some language. And so some of these may be very in line with their language. Some of these um, are not. Do you have, it's a mix of that. Do you have copies of these amendments? Have you seen these amendments? No. Nobody does because they're okay. still Just, on their way down. Would you give him yeah, pool, yeah, pool yeah, six? We have, six? We have, no, no, I understand that. But we already have pool six. I was I asking her to give those to him because we have those. Okay. It's only 9.53. It feels like 3 o'clock in the morning. I think I think we can remember some of you guys. And you've got a vote coming up soon. Mm -hmm. Did you have questions, Allison? Did you want staff to address? What? Uh, I can ask my questions. I can ask my questions, or I also have amendments. Why don't you hand out your amendments so that we know what that is, and then you can ask your question. Some of these I got my name on and some of them I didn't yet. Um, so the first one, um, staff has said that the remediation risks for the presence of existing environmental conditions are low um, and likely to be zero. And so it proposes a cap of $500,000 on what the city uh, would be willing to spend. And since we're saying it'll be zero, I think a cap of $500,000 is more than generous. Um, so that is my first amendment. Uh, my second amendment, which for most people does not have um, alter two on it, but for a few will, um, is I think is providing um, additional guidance for when the transportation parking and events plan is developed. Um, so the parties shall work together to develop a transportation parking and events plan, including a traffic impact analysis at the cost of Stadium Co that shall be approved by the city for which the city agrees to assist in the coordination of all relevant city capital metro, Travis County and state agencies and stakeholder groups. The transportation parking and events plan shall address the following at a minimum, on-site structure parking opportunities, residential permit parking participation and enforcement for the affected surrounding areas on game days and during major events, clearly defining roles and responsibilities for implementation, 
and determining standards and enforcement for minimizing impact to surrounding communities related to hours, noise, and other quality of life issues. So that's providing a little bit more guidance for some of the elements that must be in that plan. And then my um, third one, um, one of the major drawbacks of this term sheet is the complete lack of specificity about the transportation and how that's going to be addressed. Um, and this one that has 8.3 at the top um, is on amending page 12 of the parking revenue sharing to fund mobility improvements area. Um, and it, it directs that Stadium Co. shall spend 30% of parking revenues on the following. Traffic impact analysis identified infrastructure other than Stadium Co.'s roughly proportionate share of such infrastructure and unfunded provisions and improvements included in the transportation and parking plan. Stadium Co. shall be entitled to receive and retain 100% of parking revenues after the city has certified that all traffic impact analysis identified infrastructure and provisions and improvements including the transportation and parking plan have been fully funded. Um, I think some other people may have amendments, but let me know when you want me to ask. So that alter number three is 8.3 parking revenue sharing to fund mobility improvements. That's alter three. I think people are preparing other amendments. Do you want to ask your questions while sure. people are getting their amendments? Yes. Sure. Hang on a second. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, Councilmember Alter, can you help me understand when the, on Alter number two, the well-defined transportation and event service plan that would need to be approved by the city, when do you envision, do you envision, do you envision that coming back before the stadium agreement, when the stadium agreement comes back, after the, or is there, is there, is it when it's done? So this is um, adding language to something that was, um, in the term sheet already that they would be coming up with a plan. Um, I think, you know, approved by the city would, um, you know, we would have to determine if that meant that council had to approve it or if it was the city had to approve it. But um, the idea, it's already in there to have them come back with a plan. I don't know what their timetable time. okay, was. Okay, that would be a good question. And, and I guess my, and then my second question was the one that you just highlighted, which is, are we envisioning it coming to council or was your intent that it go to city staff? Which I assume was the staff's intent. My preference would be for it to come to council, but um, we could have a discussion about that. And I do want to point out that the 30% was chosen because that's what the Ohio Exposition Commission receives from parking revenue sharing in Columbus. That's certainly something we can discuss on the timing of that, Mayor Pro Tem. You know, we do a lot of, there are lots of city processes that anybody developing property is going to have to go through, including somebody that's developing a stadium. So I would be comfortable saying that this person has to follow the same rules that everybody else follows. So putting in an agreement that they have to get a parking and traffic plan approved puts them in the same position anybody developing in this city is. So this is and, oh. and I don't, for me, I don't need this to kind of have to come back to the council periodically over the course of the development process. I, uh, I don't think that's our appropriate role. Uh, Mr. Mayor, could yes. we, before we start talking about specific amendments, no. which we haven't really laid out as amendments, Oh, no. Could could we? Um, I'm still trying to get an understanding of the universe of amendments. I'm counting I think ten that's right. so far. So okay, so we have. I have the mayor pro tem's amendments. Um, looks like there are eleven of them. Okay, so that so I count twenty one amendments so far. Well, I think there's yes. We have Mayor Pro Tem's, it says Mayor Pro Tem's Amendment Number 19, but I think that there are 11 in the three pages or four pages. I have Troxclair Amendment, I have Alter 1, 2, and 3, and I have Pool 1 through 6. 
And no. Council Member Garza has indicated that she has one. That's right. And I don't know if everybody has told us about all their amendments yet. So. Can I get the trucks clear amendment? I don't think it got down to this end. Coming down now. And I have a couple more as well. There's more amendments on this end of the dais. I'll send them that way. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes. There's a couple of more amendments on this end of the dais. More amendments, okay. What else do we have? Um, it's also 10 o'clock. Okay. Is there a motion to move past 10 o'clock? Councilmember Garza makes a motion. Is there a second? Councilmember Flanagan. Any discussion? Those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, voting no is uh, Houston and all three others voting aye. We're continuing. Passes. Is there a trucks clear two? I have a one and a three. There's a two. There's a two coming? Okay. It's coming. So the one that you have trucks clear, you should make that trucks clear number one. Trucks clear number one is 1.1 1 .1 require PSV to pay rent closer to market rate. And then uh, trucks clear three has three amendments on it. But Trox Player 2 is still coming. Mr. Mayor, this might be the time for me to make a suggestion, which it, I'm fine if people don't want to follow it, uh, but I think I'd like to make it. Since it's 10 o'clock, and like I said, I counted, I'm out, I've lost count now. I think maybe we have 25 amendments or so. And it's 10 o'clock. So, my question, and I'm not sure, I mean, some of these have been posted and some of them have been discussed and stuff. I'm not sure if they all have. But my question to the group is, is shall we just wade through these? Is this the time to do that, which may take us a little while? Or is it appropriate to take a little time and, and come back? I don't want to postpone to the 23rd, but to come back maybe next Wednesday and work through these. I'm, I'm just laying it out. I'm not making a motion or anything. I'm just laying it out for consideration. How many people could be here tomorrow until noon? Can anybody not be here tomorrow until noon? I don't want to be here before noon. <laughs> then I think we have to keep working tonight. Whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, that's how I would go. Did you, what? When you said until noon, I don't understand that we would reconvene at noon or before noon. Before noon, we would reconvene in the morning, and 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 work till noon. That would be an alternative to trying to get it done tonight. If people can't be here tomorrow, then then I think we should keep working. I think, if I if I may, the benefit to what Councilmember Kitchen was saying is having a few extra days gives us an opportunity to ingest all the information including the changes to the term sheet and maybe even before we get to amendments i know i have questions so that i can understand the changes to the term sheet and probably other people have have questions on the changes to the term sheet as well and then and then i would also like to remind us that we have the ballot is it the ballot language that we were also going to talk about tonight which i really would like to be able to get that piece nailed down And as far as Friday is concerned, I, I could probably get in here about 11 or at 12, but I, I, I can't do the morning. Can't do tomorrow morning. I can't do afternoon. I'm ready to vote no on all the amendments, too. That would also get us done. Well, sure. Do we also have an opportunity to get all of these amendments out so the public can see them? We have about 24. I know my staff had been working right up to the very last second because of the fact that we got the term sheet so late last night and we haven't even really been able to work through that. And I think it's really, it's important and it's incumbent upon us to get these, these various amendments out so the public can see them as well. And, and for the parties who are involved. 
I think Mr. Suttle would appreciate a little bit of time to look through them as well. Mayor? <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem? Um, so I would say, one, I will ask my staff to post mine up on the message board. I also have extra cop, not a ton, but some extra copies if anybody in the public wants some, I'm happy to hand them out. Because I said, I indicated earlier that I had a, a, some conflicts tomorrow, I just want to touch base on that and say I believe I have resolved them so I can be here if that's the will of the group um, or I'm happy to schedule it next week. I would suggest though that um, there are some really good amendments in here. And so I hope we I hope we will work through them. It's unclear to me kind of what the best mechanism for doing that is, whether we take a five-minute recess and sort of think about what the best process would be moving forward. But I do think I do think we're gonna need time to read each other's and give that some time. So whether we try to do that tonight or tomorrow morning or next week. How about if we take five minutes and have everybody check their calendars, Let's their availability that. tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon, and then their availability the first part of next week. Uh, and let's see if we can agree on a time within the next few days when we could all be here. I mean, in, I mean, there are lots of ways to, well, we, we, we should find out if we're gonna do this or not. So, so let's take a few minutes so everybody can check their calendars and their schedules and let's see if we're gonna be able to do this uh, tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon or with the first few days of next week. Council Member. And, and Mayor, I'll, I'll make sure that my one page is printed, but I have amendments to uh, lock down more tightly things that we already brought up in our last vote, which are the affordable housing opening date uh, how the discount and free tickets would uh, would work, and the um, and the labor peace agreement language just being more locked in more specifically. So okay. we'll have that handed out when you get. Totally back. good to have those. Let's take a recess for five minutes and everybody check their calendars and let's come back and see if we're going to be able to find uh, another time in the next few days. And then you need to check with your people and see whether or not that would work. Mayor, I'm not, I'm not, are you asking only about tomorrow or are you asking about, I, I, I'm asking okay, but there's about, a weekend, I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to. I'm asking people to check Friday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday okay. of next week. I just want to. Those four days. And then, Mayor, if I could, I'd like to, if we are going to put soccer aside, if we, I don't know, I'm, I, maybe, maybe we'll stay, but I definitely want to work on the ballot language, too. I understand. What? Yeah, and I think, I mean, my hope is that we'd be agreeing that we would be disclosing all the amendments so that we wouldn't be showing up with new amendments. And these would be the amendments we would be dealing with. Let's take five minutes. Everybody check their schedules Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and let's see if there's an alternative that's better than continuing to work now, which I'm prepared to do. The time is 10.08. All right, council members, everybody check the calendar. We're coming back. All right, so we, uh, uh, let's start with one that I think might be the, should be the easiest, and then we'll get to the harder ones. We have a budget meeting next Wednesday. Staff says they don't need the whole day. Can we do it Wednesday morning? Yes. All right. Can we also agree that all amendments will daylight tonight and any amendments not tonight, we're not considering. We're just going to consider the amendments that daylight that get handed out here tonight. And then we're going to take action on Wednesday. What? No public testimony. This is just work session. This is just us to try and put this to bed. Special called, special called meeting. We'll notice it tomorrow. We okay with this? We're gonna, the question is, can we set a special, the question is, um, 
the, but the proposal would be would be that we would have a special call meeting Wednesday morning, which is when we have a budget meeting right now. We would move that just to be convened in the afternoon after lunch. Uh, but we would spend the morning on this, and we would consider amendments that are daylighted passed out tonight. Uh, and that would be the universe of amendments that we would consider. We would come in Wednesday morning and, and act on amendments that got seconds. Uh, and we would spend three hours doing it, and then we would be done. We would vote on this resolution. Mayor, Council, we had to get an extension from MLS to, we had to get an extension to MLS in hopes of getting an answer tonight. If the council wants to take the time to look at these amendments, some may be okay, some may not be okay, at least to pre-court. I don't know about the council. If the council wants to take the time to do that and come back Wednesday, that's the council's prerogative. We are going to answer to the league tomorrow as to whether or not we get an extension or not until Wednesday, and then we'll be able to tell you whether Wednesday will be for not or not. But if, if the council needs more time, then the council needs more time. Okay, we need more time. Um, and uh, if you need the manager to get on the phone with anybody in the league tomorrow, uh, then, then he'll do that. You know, some of the things that have been proposed are, to my mind, clearly uh, poison pills. I mean, there are amendments that, when you look at them, you know that they make the deal die. Uh, some of them, you know, may be more serious, and, and we'll take the lime and go through them. But some of them clearly, I think, are, are, are intended to, to not let it pass. And if we're going to vote it down, we should just vote it down. Uh, but, we can, but we can work through, we can work through the list. And no, no, shh, 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 shh. but we'll go through the list and we'll figure out what's what. Mayor Pro Tem. Mayor, I'm sorry I was um, off when you laid out the plan, so I'm trying to catch up. But in any case, I, I would like, I think it would help, be helpful if we're going to have a pause between the distribution tonight of the amendments and when we discuss and vote on them. It would help me if we sort of flew through them um, very quickly and got some initial feedback from staff or from the appropriate entities so that we had that. Uh, to, we had that information. I mean, you've, you've identified that some would kill the deal. Um, be helpful to know what the opinions are on which those are so that we can give those thought and weigh and balance them. I have one, for example, that I, that I want to ask the staff about. I haven't had an opportunity to ask them for an estimated cost of it. So, you know, if we allocated, say, 30 minutes to just fly through these amendments and maybe ask each um, council member to lay them out and get any quick feedback we can from the relevant parties. I think that would be, that would help our deliberation. Oh, could I, can I respond to that? Councilman Poole first, then we'll come back. So I have to think about what you're suggesting, um, because if we were continuing tonight, we would be going through these, um, but since seems like we are stepping back in order to give everybody an opportunity to think through them. Um, I don't know that I would be comfortable with allowing staff to give us uh, a thumbs up or thumbs down, or even Mr. Suttle a thumbs up or a thumbs down in, in this setting, absent our ability to debate them. So I don't, I don't, and then I, do have questions on, as I mentioned earlier, I do have questions on the revised term sheet. So would we also be asking questions of, of Precor on Wednesday? Well, I think if you have questions now, let's ask your questions now. And, and I'm fine going through the amendments quickly so that if people want to get additional information, uh, it, would, it would advance the ball and it would decrease the likelihood that someone on Wednesday would say, well, I'm just learning something new today, so uh, I'm not able to act or don't have enough information. So I would be, I like the suggestion of just running through them real fast and giving people the opportunity to ask questions about the term sheet. But we're not going to debate the merits of any of these at this point. This is an information, as I understand it, it's an intent to be able to gather information. Mayor. I think you've had a chance to go through a lot of these amendments now, is that right? We have, Mayor, and, I, and I'll tell you that um, some of them, well, let me just tell you, this has been a give and a take. 
Your staff took a two page long resolution passed by city council, turned it into a 30 page term sheet. It's very detailed. It's, it's, um, no, it, it, it outlines a good deal. Some of these amendments that I see on here, whether or not they're intended as a poison pill or not, I don't know, but I can tell you there are many poison pills in what I've seen passed out tonight because Precourt has negotiated the best deal in the country for a sports stadium and anything else in these uh, amendments that are financially related, if the amendment is placed on, you, our city will not get an MLS team if this thing gets any more unbalanced than it already is financially. So at some point, you know, it gives rise to the larger issue. Yes. You know, in terms of what the role of the council is on negotiating deals uh, and then how we work with our staff when we negotiate deals. And, and maybe at some point we just need a retreat or something to, to, to go through those kinds of conversations. But I'm not sure if I was somebody who was negotiating with the city, I would ever negotiate with the staff. I would, I would say with all due respect, Mr. Manager, I want to negotiate with your council at the end of the day, so let me just do that deal. What if I negotiate with you ahead of that, and, and I'm, then I'm not going to negotiate my best deal because I need to hold stuff back, but I don't know how much to hold back because I can't negotiate with them yet. Uh, so I understand that issue, but we are where we are, and, and we're in that old paradigm that someday I hope we're able to change. Um, well, I, I want to congratulate your staff because they did negotiate hard and they did do a good deal. But in any event, we are where we are right now. Uh, so let's go through informationally and let's go through these amendments and, and surface questions that people want to ask, not to discuss the merits of, of any of these, but to just work through that. Mayor, I object to the notion that we are going to um, not allow other amendments. It's been brought to my attention that there are some um, issues with the term sheet from a legal perspective. I'm not a lawyer. I haven't had a chance to read it in enough care to be able to, to look at those. Um, those are not necessarily substantive to in the way that you are framing things. Um, but I don't want to be precluded if we find issues of a legal nature that because of the way this process went that were overlooked, um, you know, more mistakes. I don't know what those are. I haven't been able to read through them. Um, but I am concerned of any notion that we would be taking away our ability to make amendments. And I also want to add that I I resent the implication that we shouldn't be able to make um, suggestions um, to change the terms to get to a point that we could be able um, to approve it. It's obvious that there's not a majority to approve it as is um, tonight. And so, you know, we can vote on it tonight and it will fail or we can try to make it sufficiently better that enough people um, can support it. Um, I think there would be the votes to approve this tonight. But I think what I think what we're trying to do is to find an accommodation. If we were going to consider this tonight, we would consider all the amendments that people had tonight, we would take a final action. What we're trying to do is to say, rather than doing that and considering all these tonight and taking a final action, whether it was up or whether it was down, we would be doing it based on the amendments that we have. And then the question was, do we extend this for a couple more days to give people more time to do that? And, and I'm perfectly amenable to doing that, but not to open it up to more amendments than we have tonight, because if we're voting tonight, we'd be voting on the amendments tonight. So, so I think it is entirely uh, uh, possible and prudent and, and reasonable for uh, a legislative body like ours to say, we're gonna consider the amendments that are before us. Uh, and it was under that understanding uh, that, that I was willing to extend it past tonight. Mayor Pro Tem. So I, I have a couple of questions about other amendments that maybe we could jump into, but I want to just say, I, yeah, I would have a hard time agreeing to that kind of hard and fast rule too, and I'll give you one example. Some of my amendments were written with the assumption that, you know, at, at various points we've talked about just, uh, just voting to negotiate the term agreement sheet and not negotiate and execute, and so some of my amendments are actually presented with that understanding that probably somebody was going to bring forward that amendment. So absolutely, I'm going, you know, if that's not the circumstance, then I'm going to change mine. Um, I mean, there are just, you can you could go on and on about that, but there are definitely ways in which our amendments might or might not fit together and would require another amendment. So I'm, I just couldn't agree to, I, I can absolutely agree that 
you know, we'll try to surface them all and we'll try to stick to this and not expand the universe. But, um, and, and of course, the body always has the right to say, no, we didn't know about, yeah, that's a new idea. We didn't have an opportunity to study it, so let's not, let's, um, you know, we're going to stick to no new, no new topics. But in any case, I wanted to ask a question of our staff about one of my amendments, which is um, the request that the city manager negotiate an independent third, border, third party assured wetland delineator or the equivalent um, to determine if there are wetlands. I know that we did get a memo last night, I think it was, or yesterday. Can you, can you help me understand um, whether that would be valuable, whether you feel you've already performed that work? I think there's concern from the community around this issue, as you know, and, and interest in seeing somebody outside. So if, if this amendment passes, what would you see as the timeline for bringing, for getting somebody to do that assessment? Is it something that could be completed quickly? 